Easy your Mac, Mac, Mac. HS on deck, no meds. Why S bake off with Gap? Yes. Yo, Sarge from Four back with another reaction. No, nope, no reaction. Back with another story time. Uh, no, I'm gonna keep this one brief because it's still very fresh. I just wanted to do it now whilst it is still fresh. But um, yeah, it's no exaggeration to say that I nearly died yesterday. Um, really nearly died. Um, it's gonna be a weird story time because it's it's one where it's like I don't really have details of what actually happened because I wasn't awake. Like we were coming back from a party at like five in the morning. It was in Leicester, and um, we're coming back to Nottingham, and we were about ten minutes away from Nottingham. Like when from when I clocked afterwards where we were, and from how long it took us to get home. Eventually, we were no less than ten minutes away from home when this happened. So my boy is driving, right? And um, what is it? He he told me that what happened was he's driving and another car entered our lane and is just facing us head on. And if he didn't swerve, I wouldn't be making this video today. Like he and I, 100% would have died, 100%. Um, our friends in the back, I don't know how they would, they, their injuries would have been much worse than what they eventually were. Um, but as it happened, what happened instead was that he swerved out the way and the car just rolled from that. It, it just rolled. And I, I know it rolled multiple times because I can feel it in my neck. Like I was asleep in the passenger seat, right? Which is why this is all really weird to me. Like it feels like everyone's making a huge deal out of it, which they should, because I'll show you the video of how the car looked afterwards. I can't lie. People have died from less. Like, people have really died from less. I've seen videos where people have died from less. Like, I've got to be so thankful to God that I'm here, bro. Because even as it is, I'm still kind of shaking. It's barely been... It's been over 24 hours now. It's been about... It's been about 35 hours now since it happened. Like, it's still very fresh. Happened 5 a.m. in the morning yesterday. And, um, yeah, man. The car just rolled. I was asleep... I slept through the whole thing and um for me that's what concerns me the most like how did i sleep through that like i i don't know how i slept through that because my friends at the back were also sleeping but they said they at least heard the bang 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 when the car was rolling that like, they could at least hear it and they didn't know what it was but they could feel like that something was going on i didn't from my side all that happened was we're in the car coming back, we're talking, laughing, but we're all really tired. So we slept. And then I've woken up, they're saying, get out of the car, bro. I'm like, all right, cool. I try to open the door, and the door's not moving. I'm like, what's going on? They're telling me if I'm climb out, I'm climbing out the windscreen and I'm covered in glass. I've got cuts on my hands. I don't know if you can still see that. It's dried up now, I've got cuts on my hands. My arms will cut up. I don't know if there's anything on this arm. I don't think so. On here, I don't think there's anything. But, like, it's this arm took the most of it. That cut there is big. And this hand was bleeding at the time. Um, I don't think there's any other visible injuries I suffered. Um, but my neck really hurts. Like, even now, it still really hurts. But yesterday was terrible. Because I remember when it happened, I've climbed out and I'm walking... And I've sat down on the ledge and I've turned around and I'm just looking at the car. And obviously when you're tired, normally you're very disoriented when you wake up. Like you don't really know what's going on on a normal day. Like if I, yeah, yeah, like when your alarm goes off, for example, and you don't want to be waking up, like you didn't naturally wake up. It takes you a second or two to recalibrate and clock. All right, cool. Where am I? I'm in bed. What's the time? You check your phone and then slowly you kind of clock what's going on. But imagine you're just sleeping, you wake up, you don't even realise it, but you're upside down, covered in glass, bleeding. Like, it was the weirdest experience of my life. Like, I feel like that's the main reason I wanted to make this video. So I have, for myself, some sort of documentation of how it truly felt at the time. Because I don't think I'll ever really, really process it because of just how I experienced it. Like, the way... All I experienced was just waking up in confusion 
in pain and then being told get out and i'm climbing out of a windscreen i'm like okay i don't know what's going on i was just listening to what i was being told i was literally just listening to what i was being told they say get out i'm like okay cool 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 like are we okay is everyone okay i saw flashing lights the police were already there i don't know how long we were there for my phone was completely covered in glass i don't know if it's glass from the phone itself or from the windscreen um yeah it was, it was really bad it was it was really bad um the guy that caused it got banned for two years like do you know what kind of acts of terrorism you have to be committing on the road to be banned for two years that man said the police pulled up and said bro give me your lessons no like you're handing in your lessons right now and you're getting in the back of the car like i don't know what he did i really don't know what he did for them to confiscate his license on the scene. Like, they didn't even bother with court, no nothing. They're like, fam, today I'm judge, jury, and executioner. Give me your license right now. This is no longer your property, fam. Get it back in two years. And he's probably going to have to redo the theory, repass the driving test. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know how people like that are ever allowed on the road, fam. Like, that's how things like this happen. Like, I really could have died because of some idiot, like... I don't want to go out like that. Like, if I'm if I'm dying, like, I at least want to be... Like, I want to get to heaven and be like, you know what? It's my own fault, like. It's my own fault. But really and truly, like, I want to live till I'm old. I want to accomplish things. I want to be able to look back at what I've done, show my son and my daughter that, yo, when I was your age, this is what I was doing. I want you to do better than I did, but this is what I personally did. And I want to be able to be proud in that moment of what I'm showing them. And I can't lie, like, I've got things to be proud of now. Like, to be fair, for a 19-year-old, I've achieved quite a lot, if I'm being honest. Like, it's quite a reflective period of time. Like, even the fact that I know that it's there's a point in me being sat here talking. Like, I'm not just talking to myself. Like, potentially thousands, if minimum hundreds of people are going to see this and care. Like, that's a nice position to be in. Like, I'm, I'm very appreciative. I feel like I'm a very appreciative person of how life is. Which is why, for me, it was really weird to be told that you nearly lost everything like it was just like i'm still coming to terms with it now and i think because i was asleep through the whole thing i don't think i'll ever truly realize the gravity of it which is weird because this is the third time in my life that i've nearly died like genuinely nearly died but i've got no recollection of it like it's weird like i don't know if i told you a lot about my heart operation when i was a kid i don't know how i haven't done a story on that i'll do a story on it at some point but yeah, like when I was born, there was a hole in my heart and the arteries were swapped the wrong way around. So I was okay for six months, but then at six months, one day I just collapsed and then went to the hospital. They had to drive really slow in the ambulance to be careful of going over bumps because if they went too hard over a bump, it could have just unsettled everything in me. I could have died there and then. They did surgery. They told my mum and my dad, any family member that wants to see them, Make sure they can come because we can't promise you that he'll be alive in the morning. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed. They even got a pastor to read my last rites just in case I actually died that night. Luckily, obviously, I survived that night. But I was six months old, so I don't remember that. But that's probably the closest until yesterday that I ever got to actually die. Like it really, really could have been it there and then. But obviously I was a baby, I don't remember anything. Yeah, you could literally, someone could like point a gun in your face when you're one, you won't remember that because you only start to remember things when you're like five. And then there was another time when I was a baby as well. There was a carnival going on outside where, I'm at, uh, where I lived at the time and I climbed onto the windowsill and the window was open and I was a toddler. Like there was nothing cognitively stopping me from going further. Like I didn't know at the time the risks of going further into the window. So luckily my mom saw me in a good enough time because we lived high up in that apartment. I was not surviving that fool. Like, this is a Minecraft creative mode. Like, you don't survive fools like that. So, yeah, this is really... I'd say that's probably third, like, in terms of, like, furthest away from actually probably dying. But all it took was another step and I would have died. And then I would say the heart surgery, probably second, because the doctors did all they could. And then yesterday, like, that really was the closest I ever got to die. And the weirdest thing is, I don't remember it. I wasn't even conscious when it happened, which is what's even scarier. It must have been very terrifying for my friends because I was asleep right at the front. If the windscreen shattered, that glass could have gone anywhere. As I'm 
being shown. I think it went somewhere. <laughs> the glass went somewhere. It could have gone anywhere else. And all my boys are seeing is I'm asleep. Asleep. I are shot. Not responsive. Covered in blood and glass. They must have really freaked out. So that's why when they woke me up, it was urgent. Like there was a very obvious sense of urgency. Like, yo, get up, get out. And when I climbed up, that must have been so reassuring for them. Like, I can't even start to think how terrified my friends must have been in that moment. Um, it, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Um, I did go to the hospital. If you're on my uni private story, I didn't post at all yesterday because I spent the whole day in A&E. When it initially happened, I went to A&E when I got home. I walked home and I went to A&E, but they weren't trying to tell me how long I was going to be waiting for. And at the time, I was just lacked patience i just wanted to go sleep i didn't really realize because i was asleep so i wasn't there when the car was rolling i wasn't there when those glass was flying all about so i didn't really realize i hadn't quite grasped what i had just endured it was when i woke up and the pain felt identical like it hadn't changed at all then i realized okay something something might actually be up went to any um in the end, I spent about like eight hours there. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think I got there at like four. Didn't leave until half past twelve at night. Um, yeah, it was long. It was long. But I needed to go. I really didn't want to go, but I clocked. It's not worth it. Cause even now, I still feel a bit funny. Like my tummy feels weird. They were really cautious about my stomach. At the time, I was confused because I didn't feel anything wrong. But obviously, you're intestines are there your kidneys are there your liver's there your stomach is there so if you get any damage to any of those like the complications from those are just so so complicated that they really need to make double double sure that everything is 100 percent fine i'm not even convinced that it is but i have been to any i have been seen by the professionals they've all gone to medical school and like I was saying to my friend, because she's doing medicine, she came to visit me yesterday. And I was saying to her, I can't lie, you can't really... I'm not going to lie to you. From someone who did law, you can definitely... There's definitely shortcuts in the law degree. Like, I didn't do much of that reading, if any of it. And I was getting two ones, two ones. Like, you can definitely shortcut law, but medicine... Would you want to be seen by a doctor that took shortcuts to get into that room? By the same token, I'm not sure you'd want to be seen by a lawyer that took shortcuts, but... So I'm not doing law anymore. But yeah, man... In all seriousness, um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I'll ever really grasp what happened, if I'm honest. I don't think I ever will because I just didn't experience it. But I know if I was awake, I would have PTSD to the fullest extent of just seeing that car coming towards us and freaking, the f freaking out, like... I don't know what's worse or, or, or better. I don't know if it was better that I don't remember it or I do. Because I feel like if I was awake, I would have screamed. And then I would have just panicked everyone. And my boy maybe wouldn't have been able to make the decision that he did. So I think, I believe, got to make sure everything happens for a reason. There's definitely a reason I wasn't awake to remember that. Because that would have been really traumatic. Um, even now, the PTSD I may be left with is just being a bit more cautious when I fall asleep in a car. I, I like traditionally you can ask my sister my mum i don't really fall asleep in the car like that like it's not really something i do like i'm just never that tired to sleep in the car i'd just rather get home and sleep there and more time when my sister and i are going somewhere with my mum my sister will always sleep and i'll always subconsciously want to stay awake so my mum has someone to talk to keep her brain occupied so she doesn't get tired and make any clumsy mistakes that can come in when you're tired so I feel like subconsciously, I've always had the responsibility of being awake in the car. The only reason I wasn't is because it was literally five in the morning. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to update you guys. I'm not ignoring you. I can never ignore you. I love you guys. I can't lie. And it's very fun seeing you people in person. Um, yeah, it's, it's fun. Because I feel like with me, I'm such a talkative person. So if I know that you know me and you know what I do, like we can talk about it. And I know you probably want to talk about it anyways, and I'm always down to talk about it. So it's been fun. It's been happening so often lately. I don't know why. Because I feel like views-wise, nothing's really changed lately. I don't think anything looks too remarkable. But yeah, I've been meeting better of you lot in person lately. So it's always fun when that happens. 
Got another story time coming out very soon that I need to edit. I've been meaning to edit it. Um, went to a nice event the other day. You'll see what that is once I get that video out. Probably, will actually probably be later today. Uh, uh, it's not like I've got anything else to do. I just need to rest. Um, I was on paracetamol in the hospital. Um, I need to get some more. I'm just going to be on that. Can't lie. And just rest. Just drink water. Have paracetamol and rest. So gonna be a very quiet weekend just videos coursework fifa watching youtube formula one's on in the evening mexico grand prix qualifiers at 9 p.m so gives me enough time to get everything done that i need to do and i know how i'm ending the day but yeah guys just wanted to update you guys because your boy nearly died for the third time so yeah i still feel a bit funny but the main pain is is personal. I just need to make sure that I'm keeping myself healthy as best as I can, so nothing worsens. But just pray for me, man. Keep me in your prayers. Clearly, someone's been keeping me in their prayers. <laughs> Whoever's been praying for you, thank you. Cause I can't lie, your prayers are working. Like, make sure those prayers keep coming. But for now, I've been Sarchi One Four. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. I'll be back again soon.